We're good? Okay. All right. It's Monday, guys. Monday the 29th, I think. And we are, uh, we had a great weekend. Good things going on over here. Uh, some of you know it already. And now the cars drive by. Hasn't been a car in an hour. Anyway, traffic jam. So, hope you guys are doing well. Had a great weekend. Um, the number seven video on the shop sign posted this morning. And so far, it seems like everybody seems to like it. The final video will be on Wednesday, and uh, really happy with it. Hope you guys like it too. So, um, I got a couple of announcements. First things first is, if you go and watch the course, in case some of you don't know, we have a course, a free course through the website, Seven Steps to Sign Carving Basics. If you go to that, and for some reason it doesn't want to play, the videos don't want to play. I've heard twice now that people had an issue with their internet settings. One of them for sure was it was using Internet Explorer when he switched over to, I don't know, Chrome or something else. And then it played just fine. So that is hosted actually on a website called Podia who hosts that. They, they actually have the course on their site. So maybe something's going on there. So if you can't get the course to play, let me know. But what, what you might want to check is your internet settings and go to a different browser or a different, um, what do they call that? Internet uh, provider. provider. Yeah. Well, yeah, a different browser deal like Google Chrome or Foxfire or one of those. Anyway. Uh, you're welcome, Richard. That was that. Second of all, um, getting lots of signups for the course. So thank you guys so much. Nothing but positive uh, responses. So uh, thanks so much. I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. And if you're not enjoying it, thank you for not commenting ne <laughs> negatively. So either way, um, but uh, it appears that everybody seems to be getting a lot out of it. So that's great. Secondly, no, I guess that would be third. That was two. This would be three. Thirdly, you may have received probably an email from us this morning. Okay, if already, you are okay. part of our QuickBooks list, which there are many, you may have received an email. What? They're eating that. Are they eating again? the tree again? Yeah, that's just the weirdest. Who's thing. over there? Nelly. Nelly. Yeah, they all like the leaves on that tree. It's the tree of dog life. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, yes, we are sending out emails, and if you did receive one of those emails, then you're in our QuickBooks list. And um, rest assured, we're not going to be bombarding you with tons of emails. We just want to, we set up this system to keep better, um, in better contact with the people that have bought from us, and that was on, um, on the QuickBooks list. Danny Meadows, so he got four orders today. Cool. Deborah Moore from Puerto Rico. Artie from Long Island. Terrific. Darren Smith. Uh, Darren Smith says most, th most things are not Internet Explorer friendly anymore, i.e. is being phased out huh? Internet Explorer. That, would, that might be why. Then yeah. that might be it's it. It's a browser. That's it. Thank browser. you. Browser. Thank you, that's, Dan. That's the, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why that word just didn't come to me. But anyway, so you guys will get... If you're part of our QuickBooks list, which if you ever bought from us in the last three or four years, you are, you will get um, another email tomorrow and another email on Wednesday. And then, it, you know, we just want, there's a lot of people that don't open first emails or whatever. It, they'll all be different uh, subjects, but just real quick. But um, you can always obviously unsubscribe, opt out, and all of that. So, um, Again, you guys will hear from us. That will be one way that we'll let everybody know when we've got sales coming up, when we've got featured items, when we've got all kinds of different things. So that is, um, that's that. Get it. Let's get into the question. So I had a... Okay, I have one. Let me answer this real quick. Okay. Uh, Artie Borger said, uh, try to get on the website to order his shirts and couldn't find out how. Just when you go on the website, look under merchandise. And then put your color and your size. And all colors are not option are not in every size, so I will have to let you know if the size and color 
yeah. we have in stock. So I know it's been it, it's kind of hard for me to find merchandise. So, but if, if you, you go, if, it's on the right hand side of the front page. Is it? Yeah. Okay. So another way is you can go uh, that search window at the top. If that doesn't work, go all the way to the bottom and go to uh, site, site yeah. map. And when you hit that site map, literally you'll see all of the categories, all of the items, everything. And that really, that's the way I normally go if I can't seem to find something, you know, easily. I'll go to that site map. So try that, Artie, and that might help you. So, all right, I had a phone conversation the other day with a gentleman, and he was going to use the panel board. And in case you guys don't know what the panel board is, this is a... Uh, something that you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's and it's just a laminated they call it uh, yeah I think they call it panel board but it's made out of ponderosa pine most of them and it's laminated pieces that are put together that are really for projects most of the time people uh, paint these but you can make signs out of them I've made many signs out of this and it actually works pretty well you have to be kind of choosy where the knots are and stuff so it's not perfect material but actually, I like this material better than I do the material that they use for the rounds. But anyway, so he was making a sign out of this. And if you guys have watched any of my videos, and I'll give you something to watch, I've always said that you should... I never trust anything that's laminated that I don't laminate. So I'll always use a backer on this. He was getting ready to use a quarter-inch plywood backer on this. And... Um, I suggested that he use at least five eighths, if not three quarter. And the reason for that is number one, it gives it more strength. But the biggest reason is, and if you, well, you can't really tell on this. You'll see on this, you'll see I've got an SS on, uh, and that, no, that's not Nazi thing. That's sanding sealer. I've got sanding sealer on here, and I can kind of feel it, but every time I put sanding sealer on a piece of this, uh, I'll write that on the edge just to make sure. But if I didn't have sanding sealer, and this has been sitting around now for probably three or four months. It was an extra piece off the end of one. Uh, this thing would be cupped like crazy if I didn't have sanding sealer on it. But that's the biggest reason that when we make a sign out of it, that uh, I'll, I'll put the backer on it. Now, I've talked before about how I'm learning all the time and I'm evolving. If you go back and watch these videos in sequence, if you watch number 45, when I was using, when I first started using this stuff, I used half inch plywood. And then when I got to number 77, I was actually making a two-sided sign and it was two pieces about this size, maybe a little bit bigger, back to back. But what I didn't do on there that I ended up doing later on is putting a, I, I literally had two pieces and I put glue on both of them and I stuck them together and laminated them that way. But uh, after that, I learned that I, I would put, the only way I would use like a thin piece of plywood is in between two pieces. And that, that isn't a strength thing. That is more of a thing uh, just to make sure that it is locked together so that it won't delaminate. Um, and then 109, that's where uh, the first time that I started using three quarter inch backer because I, when I used half inch backer, I still found that over a period of time it developed a cup. Darren Smith said he just made a three by, th oh, where I lost it? Three foot by three foot sign using that. And he used one by two furring strips on the back. And that was a, that was another thing that I was going to get into. If you don't want to use a plywood backer, you could just put literally furring strips like, uh, who's that, Danny? Darren. Darren. You could put furring strips. You could put two by fours. You could put one by one by four pine, you know, two or three strips down the back. That will, that will serve the same purpose. For me, I like the plywood because I like the idea of it looking like it's massive and it's big. If I was going to use the furring strips, what I probably would do is put it all the way around the edge and make a frame so that when you look at it from the side of the sign, it looks like it's an inch and a half thick. That's just me. That's my personal preference. I like stuff that looks a little bit more massive. But absolutely, you could, you could even probably do it with metal straps, anything that will keep those laminations from coming apart and give it uh, stability so that thing won't warp. 
Oh, that, no that's fighting, kids. Who? The birds. Oh, the... no fighting. <laughs> it's an animal show here all the time. Um, so, and then on uh, video, so there's 45, 77, 109, and then 223 is where I made the Rolling Hills sign for John Peters. And that, I again, I used three quarter inch. And so that, and, and that was the, um, that was this panel board. And it, it looked massive, and I, that's what I wanted. I wanted a massive look. So, again, just at, to reiterate, um, number one, I'd use three, five eighths or three quarter inch plywood backer if you're going to back this with plywood. If you're going to do it like Darren did, you know, probably one by four pine would be enough because it's going cross grain. Um, and number two, the other point was that. Uh, remember, I, I'm learning and evolving. I've got some experiments right now that I want to try on different things uh, that I might do stuff different. So uh, always try and look for the latest video. And if there's any questions at all, obviously, you guys ask me and I can send you links to the videos. All right, so that was, um, yeah, that was that. Scott that Christian said, I have a friend that wants a sign, but he wants... 11 by 60, what size letters should I use? 11 by 60, okay, that's five foot long, one foot by five foot, basically. It really depends, that's Scott. Mm -hmm. It depends, Scott, it depends on how much, I. you know, I would like to tell you, but it depends on how much copy he wants on there. If he wants that much wording on there, then, you know, it's gonna be smaller letters. If he, just one line of big letters, so you really have to, I have to have more context. Um, if it's just one line, probably four inch, five inch, as long as it'll fit in the length, depending on how long the words are. So it really depends. But it, here's what you can do, uh, Scott. If you want to send me an email with the copy that he wants on there, then I can kind of do some calculations and, um, and give you my thoughts on it. I do that all the time. So next question. Uh, this was off of a YouTube comment. It says, I was wondering why you jump around the piece so much lifting the router off. Is it to see better? I think it would increase your chances of making a mistake, which is an interesting comment. Um, so what he's talking about is when I'm carving a sign and you guys are watching me carve a sign, many times, and, and there, there will be times, if you go back and watch the old videos, Dad was always telling me, lift your router up. Let him see what you're doing. Lift your router up. Because if I'm carving a sign here, it might be tough to keep track of what I'm carving. <coughs> so I tend to kind of get into it. Especially if you're carving with an, uh, a router that doesn't have a, a clear base plate like this, you would definitely, and this the, I've made way back in the past, years and years ago, before we made these clear base plates and it was black that's the way they always used to be all of the router base plates were black because nobody was really doing with them what we do I would make mistakes if I didn't lift the router off so it was interesting that he said I would think that would increase your chances of making mistakes by lifting the router off I think the opposite is true I think the more you lift that off and and get a context of where you are in the sign. It's so easy for me when I'm carving a sign, it's like a vacation for me. I, I'll think about business, I'll think about almost anything other than what I'm doing and it's easy for me to get carried away. I don't know if that's the same with you guys. If you're listening to music, whatever you're doing when you're carving, it's really easy to kind of lose track of where you are. And so I, I suggest lift that router as often as you need to, to know exactly where you are in the context of where of what wording you've got or where you're if you're doing artwork you want to lift that thing a lot I lift that thing if I'm doing a little picture that's that that's you know three inches round I'll lift that thing 15 or 20 times because I really want to see exactly what I've carved what I've got to go where I want to go what that's big old lizard oh he went right Dang, through the wall. I wanted to get a picture of him. He was huge. <laughs> he lives out here. I think he lives. Yeah, he just lives out kinda, by the waterfall. Yeah, he's anyway, got a sorry. neat little collar on him. Um, um, anyway, uh, let's see. So Lee Harrington says I lift my router a lot while routing. Tessa said I make mistakes when I lift it up. 
Really? S Scott Christian said, I went all the way to the beginner on your newsletter right now. And I'm now in this number 68. <laughs> Darren Smith, definitely the same hair. Sign carving is my stress relief. Yeah. Yeah, and that's funny that you say that, Tessa, because I, that it just seems kind of opposite for me. I, I want to lift that router and know exactly where I'm at, exactly what's coming up. Um, if I if I kind of lose track of what letters I'm doing, it's just it's too easy for me to make a mistake and kind of get lost in the in whatever I'm thinking about. So um, I I'm the opposite. Uh, if you're making mistakes when you're lifting the router, my guess is you might be losing control of it while you're lifting it out or while you're putting it back in. So. And I don't know that this is a case. This is just a guess on my part. But remember, any time that I'm I'm lifting my router out of a out of a carve, um, this cord is really in my way. If I'm lifting my router out of a carve, again I've got my hands down, and I am I am not I never would lift like that. Well, I I won't say never, but. 99.9% .9 of the time. I would never lift like that because that doesn't give you complete control. It's super easy to get a bobble in there. What you want to do is hold down one side. If you're left-handed, you know, you might go that way. If you're right-handed, you might go that way. But you definitely want that base plate in control. <laughs> the rabbit's coming right up behind you. You definitely want your base plate in contact with that board the whole time. Vicky wants to get the little bunny rabbit coming up behind us. Uh, you gotta move move to your right, babe. He's right out there. Can you guys see the bunny? They, I, oh yeah, you've got your microphone on there so they can hear you. He's a little jack. No, that's a cotton tail. Is it a cotton tail? Yeah, look at oh, his Oh, he is a cotton tail. Oops, where'd he go? I lost him in my... He's getting nervy. Because, you know, our dogs are known for uh, eating rabbits. Well, I think that rab dogs are getting old and fat. <laughs> I guess so, <laughs> yeah. Them anymore. Yeah, the dogs are getting okay. kind of decrepit. So I tried to get the lizard so you could see I'm the kinda, big old uh, lizard. I'm Oops. hooked up here as far as my mic. There we go. So anyway, um, Tessa, I don't know if that's the issue. She or says she thinks it has to do with her hands and eyesight due to her MS. Yeah, and that may that might be so that might be a different thing for you. But if you think about whenever you you either go into the carving or you come out of that carving, keep that keep one side of that base plate. Just let gravity hold that in, in place, and that's how you go in and out of your carving. Um, that's always uh, that's always the best way to keep control of it. But anyway, Charles um, Booster says the more and more of it, then I carve. Hold on, I lost it. Uh, the more what you say makes sense. Thank you, Dave, Eric, and Vicky. You're Lee welcome, Charlie. Lee Harrington says we get we we have a lot of rabbits. We used to have guinea pigs, guineas, and pigs. Uh, they got together and we got guinea pigs. <laughs> yeah, we almost have a. Okay, uh, Artie says that rabbit has come out a few times on your other shows. Oh really? We have neighbors' rabbits that have their bunnies under our deck. Doug Powell. Yeah, we've got we the, got quail. This time of year is so cool because we just got stuff all over. Yeah. We have families of quail go through and the rabbits go out and eat the bird seed and it's just it's so cool. A lot of lizards. lizards we haven't seen many snakes this year. I though. haven't seen any. Yeah, we haven't seen many snakes, which kind of surprises me. But the pigs have been really active and the I think the snakes can. Already said he had chickens and they got eaten. Ooh, uh oh. Chicken. Chick fried chicken. Darren Smith said, uh, I've had a recent run of carvings reclaimed whiskey barrel heads. Ooh. Who's that? Um, Daryl? Darren Smith. Darren. Bob Bennett said, I lifted router up so I can see where I am and to clear the sawdust. So that's a yeah, that's another reason why. I hadn't thought Bennett. about that, but yeah, that's another reason why. So, um, you know, we all have our own ways. So whatever works for you, that's fine. But I lift my router up constantly. And I, it, 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 before in the old days, I would do it a lot because it, the base plates were black and I would lose track of where I was. Now we've got a clear base plate, so it's not as bad. But uh, dad was always telling me to lift my router up so people can see what I'm doing because of the camera. 
All right, you guys, sign carvers of the day. That was really a good conversation, though. I like that. That kind of uh, led into some interesting uh, things. All right, Bob Bennett. I think, yeah, he's here. There you are, Bob. Look at that. So this is for his wife's uh, rose garden bench. Oh, cute. So she sits out there on her bench and plays with her roses. Yeah, it's very cute. Great job, Bob. I bet she loves it. This one's really cool. Bob Cowan. So this one is 40, 40, uh, 44 and a half by 22 and a half pine. Uh, used our four inch Bookman letters, 12 coats of czar on wow. that thing. I don't think I've ever put 12 coats of anything other than when I screwed up resin and it seemed like 12 coats that we had to put on. <laughs> Um, and use it's the really one shot white. It's setting with those flowers and trees. And Isn't that cool? Yeah, really, really cool. Bob, great job, buddy. You knocked it out of the park, my friend. Very, very nice. Uh, Dave Garamonti. I think he's here too. Yeah, I think Dave normally is kind of like chimes in. So this is one of his first. And he cut his shape with a router and the template guide. So that sometimes people have problems. Now we got it pair out here uh, sometimes people have problems learning how to do the cutting the shape with the template guides and stuff but so good job Dave very nice nice work this one's really cool Dan Medlin Ontario Canada I think that bench is just super cool look at that bench I don't know if these are pieces of that bench I or that I really don't know Maybe there are areas of the bench that we can't see from from this view. But that bench is just super cool. I love it. Great job, Dan. And last but not least, Keith Davenport. Keith made this uh, in honor of his mother-in-law who passed from cancer and is made out of panel board. I don't know whether Keith put a backer on it or not, um, but he made this very out of cool. panel board. Huh? It's very cool. It's very cool. Uh, used rapid resizer or 60 degree uh, profile and the straight bit and used the Rust-Oleum primer and uh, red paint pens for the hearts. But that is very, very cool. Great job, Keith. All right, boys and girls, we're going long because I have been long-winded. So uh, again, you guys that, are, that got an email this morning, You'll probably get one tomorrow morning about the same time and Wednesday morning. But if you want to unsubscribe, just unsubscribe. No big deal. You're not going to break my heart or anything. Well, you probably it will kind of break my heart, but that's okay. It's all right. It's, it, been, it's, broken it's before. been broken before. <laughs> yes. And it'll be broken again. I'm sure. All right, you guys. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you guys have any questions, keep those questions coming. Keep the, I, I've, for now, I've still taken off the, the one month thing on the sign carvers of the day. So go ahead and send me as many as you got until that thing gets stacked up. One note that I, I wasn't going to mention until later in the week, but Friday, Thursday, we probably will have no live broadcast. Vicki and I are going to be on the road. We're on our way to California on Thursday. Friday night, we'll be with Ryan and Amy over in California. We've got some things going on over there. So uh, Friday night, live uh, YouTube will be uh, at Ryan's house. So I hope you guys can join us. But we'll be here tomorrow, and we'll be here Wednesday. So you guys have a great evening, and... Uh, um, Say goodnight, Gracie. I guess that's it, yeah. Vicky's <laughs> cutting me off, so... Good night, guys. Love you guys. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.